Hi guys, so you join me in the office at home, which is great that we've got it all set up. I'm super, super excited that we're now starting this Ancient Ways series. There's a little bit of a background story that, because it's the first one of the series, I just want to share the story with you. So in 2017, I had a sabbatical. I'd been working at Cornerstone City Church in Medway for about 10 years. And um, they were very generous, very kind, and they gave me a three-month sabbatical. Just before the sabbatical in 2016, and again during the sabbatical in 2017, a prophetic word was brought to me through different people, different sources who didn't know one another. And uh, this was the prophetic word. Let me share it with you now. So the image was of a uh, being in a, an old workshop, a dusty old workshop that looked like it had been standing for hundreds of years and a chest was found in this workshop and the chest looked really, really old and as the chest was open, there were all these tools inside this chest and the workshop was basically like a carpenter's workshop. And in this uh, dusty old chest were these tools and they were covered in dust and they looked like they were absolutely ancient. And as I picked each tool out of the chest and blew them down and got the dust off, actually each of the tools was brand new, never been used, been laid dormant for centuries, but they were absolutely brand new tools. They were the very, very best, like master craftsman type tools. And on each one was etched a word. And the words were words such as prayer and pilgrimage, sacred seasons and Sabbath, giving and fasting and sacred meals and so these tools were all kind of spiritual tools that had never been used they'd been hidden away forgotten about for centuries and then the master craftsman himself the master carpenter approached me and said i want you to down tools i want you to put down the tools that you've been using and i want to apprentice you in how to use these tools these are my tools and I want you to learn how to use them so that you too can become a master craftsman. Like I say, that prophetic word was brought through at least two different sources, but I think I'd heard it three different times. And during that time, I was also studying for a master's and I happened to come across this book. And this book um, is called Finding Our Way Again, The Return of the Ancient Practices. And as I was reading this book, amazingly, it spoke of these spiritual practices that were etched on the tools and this book it turned out was the introductory book to a whole series of books that i've actually got just here look a little pile of them and these were about prayer and sabbath sabbath rest and fasting and the liturgical year the sacred meal tithing and giving generosity and the sacred journey, so pilgrimage. I bought this series of books for my sabbatical, having read this one as part of my master's, read the whole thing literally in about a day, because I was gripped by it. And I was like, God, are you speaking to me right now? And I bought these books and read those in literally about the first couple of weeks. These got devoured. And then off the back of that, I had a friend do this picture for me. They're carpenters tools, none of them are like Sabbath and prayer and pilgrimage. And so this is a, rem a reminder to me, very, very practical reminder to me of, of that word. To be completely honest, I have not done a lot about that in the last kind of three years. I've not done a lot about it. I've read some books, but I've not really embedded these practices wholeheartedly into my life. I've not been obedient to what God's called me to do. And since then, we've obviously planted Hope Church Sitting Bomb. And I was chatting this through with Adam Gregory and Jonathan Butts, and they're part of like the core team of what we do at Hope Church Sitting Ball. And we just felt like maybe God was saying that this is something not just for me, but actually something for our whole church community to go through. We were just starting to plan to do that and launch this Ancient Ways series. And then COVID-19 kicked off and lockdown happened. And then we were just talking the other day and we felt like, actually, you know what? Maybe we're still being disobedient. We need to go back to what God's called us to do in this season is to go through the ancient ways. One of the things we've literally just started midweek, which was kind of like the cherry on the top and really affirmed to me, having made the decision we were going to do the ancient way series, was we just started the prayer course. And it's a course uh, done by... Pete Gregg and the 24-7 prayer movement. And on session one, which we've just done on Wednesday night and Thursday night with our midweek hope groups, we did it online. There's this beautiful little image that he uses, and I'm going to cut to it now so you can watch it and you'll see what it means to me, having heard that and everything, the story that I've shared so far. 
When you say to people the word prayer, everyone has a different idea of what that actually uh, means. A and that's because really there's lots of different ways of praying. Um, there isn't just one way. It's a bit like this toolbox here. There's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of different tools, hammers and you know, screwdrivers and all stuff. And, and the thing is, obviously everyone knows every tool is there to do a different job. And if you called a handyman around and said, can you fix something? He said, well, I only know how to use a hammer, but I don't use a screwdriver. You'd think he wasn't a very good handyman. Not a good handyman Not, at all. Yeah. And, and in the same way with prayer, why limit yourself? There's a whole range. The, the Lord's Prayer is a bit like a toolbox. And we're going to go through those different tools together on this course. And so I'm hoping that you'll be just as amazed as I am. That imagery of the toolbox and there being these different tools and him actually using the word elsewhere in the video about, uh, about prayer and fasting and pilgrimage is just amazing, amazing. And it speaks into this season that I'm talking about, that picture up there, this whole thing that God's speaking to us about. And so I, I really hope that that warms your heart. And so as we now kind of look at the ancient ways, we're going to just share. There's a verse that's on the back of this introductory book, which I think frames it amazingly. Let's get out of the house because um, it's good to get outside and let's look at this Bible verse and kind of open up this new series. Let's do it. So you join me outside in God's amazing creation in the back end of Sittingbourne somewhere. We're not lost, I promise. Um, but we're just going to look at the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 6, verse 16. I'm reading from the NIV version. Words will come up on the screen. But there's this great encouragement that says this. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. And so as we kind of unpack what we're gonna be looking at over these coming weeks and months, uh, as we explore the ancient ways as part of this ancient ways series, I felt like this verse from Jeremiah is just an amazing starting point. And so we're just gonna go on a little walk now and we're just gonna explore kind of a, a few thoughts around this. Come on, let's go. So as we look at what these verses mean, it starts off by saying the Lord says, and so God's got something that he's saying to you. He wants your attention. And he says this, would you stand at the crossroads and look? And so I'm stood right now at a crossroads. Um, it's not a crossroads out and about in the streets, but this is a crossroads and a hidden place. And I think this kind of these verses talk about that, or this verse talks about that. And so the implication is that we're all on a journey through life. We're on a road that's going from A to B and from life to death. We're all headed in a direction. And God's saying, would you take a moment right now to pause in your life? and consider the direction you're going in. I'm literally at a crossroads now and I've got a choice about the direction I go in. I could literally go in this direction here to wherever that might take me, or I could go in this direction here, wherever this path might take me. I could go in this direction up here, wherever that might take me. And then just behind me, I could go on this direction here and this will take me probably somewhere completely different to the other ways. And I think many of us are going through life and we're not really considering the direction we're going in. We're not really considering the path that we're headed on. And so right now, I do need to make a choice about what direction I'm going in, and I'm gonna go that way. So would you come and follow me? Let's go. And so it says that we're to ask for the ancient path. So as we stop at the crossroads where we've just been, and we say, God, would you show me the ancient path? Now we've got a lovely little backdrop here, look, there's beautiful little lambs in the background. And so I am on a bit of an ancient path. I'm not on a nice flashy paved uh, new road. And it's a bit like that in life. People are all headed in a direction and often we're just following one another. We're going blindly from A to B, from birth to death, not really giving any thought to our purpose, to where we're headed, to what the bigger picture is. And so the main encouragement here is that we would ask God, would you show me the ancient path? It goes on to say, ask where the good way is and walk in it. And so just like now, we just saw that there's four different ways I could have gone at that crossroads. Right now in your life, there are different directions you could be headed in. And some of those are good ways and some of those are not so good ways. Not all of these roads lead to the same place. Jesus said that wide is the path that leads to destruction. The, the road that most people are headed on hasn't got a good ending. But narrow is the way to eternal life. And I think this speaks a little bit about that that the ancient path is the path that does your soul good. And as we look at the ancient ways as a series, 
and all these different tools of fasting and of prayer and of pilgrimage is actually God wants to show us some ancient ways, some forgotten ways, some hidden ways that will do our soul really, really good. He says, ask where the good way is and walk in it. And so we're going to walk in the good way and have a little chat as we go. So right now we're on what looks very much like an ancient way. And I really want to commend to you ancient ways. So hidden practices that have been dormant for hundreds of years. Things that Jesus taught his early disciples in. He spent three years uh, with a band of brothers and he taught them how to pray. He taught them how to fast. He taught them how to pilgrim. How to walk from place to place in the presence of God. He taught them how to observe sacred meals. How to give of their time and their talent and their treasure. And so over these coming weeks, we're going to be unpacking some of those things. Because it says here that when we find the good way and we walk in it, it will give rest for our souls. Now, one of the things I want to ask you is, do you need rest for your soul? I don't know about you, but I know about myself. Right now, there's so much going on in the world that fear crashes in, all sorts of other things crash in. And these ancient ways actually bring rest to our soul. They bring a sense of equilibrium or balance to our personhood. We are meant to live in communion and relationship and community with God. And the way that we do that in part is kind of sacramental. It's a grace thing that God does through his Holy Spirit as we give ourselves to prayer and to fasting and to pilgrimage and to fellowship and to giving and to eating meals together, which is a challenge right now, into practicing like sacraments like um, communion as well. These are all ways that God kind of meets with us and brings peace into our life. And so I really feel like this season, God's asking us to down tools and in a very real sense, we're able to do that because of COVID-19. For many of us, we've maybe got a little bit more space in our life. I know there will be many people that will be watching that are working on the front line and are probably busier now than ever. And we, we give thanks for you and we're really thankful for what you're doing. But in this season, could we somehow try and reconnect and rediscover God through these ancient ways because it will bring rest to our soul. It's going to do us good individually and collectively it's a good thing and so for those of you who are part of Hope Church City we really want to encourage you in these days to give yourself to meet in online with us um, as we look at these different things at the moment we, we're going through what's called the prayer course I showed the video earlier it's kind of it speaks into this season I really feel providentially that God is lining us up for something really big that's actually going to serve us when we come out of this COVID-19 season and kind of isolation and social distancing begins to lift that actually we're going to be in a lot of a, a healthier position for it. But if you're from further afield, whether you're our friends from Spain or Surrey or Sierra Leone, wherever you might be, we want to encourage you, would you come along and journey with us through this season and be encouraged by us and encourage us as we give ourselves to finding ancient ways and walking in them. And so the encouragements are twofold for us this morning as we bring this to a bit of a close. The first thing is if you're if you would say really you're far from God, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then I think the encouragement is God's asking you to pause right now. Consider the direction your life is heading in and just say, God, would you show me the way? Would you show me Jesus? Would you show me that ancient hidden path? Because I'm on a wide, narrow path and I've been going through life for however many years old you are and I've never, ever really discovered Jesus. And I think the invitation is right now that Jesus is saying, I am the way. Would you walk in it? I am the narrow path. Would you find me? I am the ancient way because I'm going to bring peace into your life. And I think that's a wonderful gift and something you'd be crazy to turn down. And then the second thing I think is for those of us who know Jesus is just to say, Lord, would you show us these ancient ways, these tools, these practices that you shared with your disciples that bring life to our souls, that bring peace into our heart particularly right now we need it but we need it 24 7 whether we're in the valley or of the shadow of death or whether we're in the green pastures we need the shepherd with us the prince of peace just to bring equilibrium and balance into our life and so those would be the two encouragements i think and so we're going to cut back to me now at the house with natalie and uh, we'll lead you in a little prayer for those of you who want to respond to that peace out